ever you feel that your PhD is just dragging you forever, that no matter how much progress you put into it, there is always another struggle. Trust me, I have been there. Today, while I'm walking on UC Berkeley campus, I'm going to share key things with you that kept me motivated and led me to survive through my PhD. When I entered my PhD, the biggest struggle for me that I was taking the classes that I haven't been prepared for. My first year, I was taking smooth manifolds, symplectic geometry and algebraic geometry. So three geometry classes in the same semester when I didn't even took like any topology class. So that's why I was like just sitting in my room <laughs> surrounded by a bunch of books and trying to study all of those three different type of geometries at the same time. And there was almost zero motivation for me because everything was so hard. I was so ashamed to go and ask questions because everyone around me like already took those classes. <laughs> Most of them already took those classes when they were like undergraduates. And I came from UCI just with two years of experience taking just simple graduate algebra, graduate analysis, and that's it. But somehow through all this process, if you're going to follow certain steps, certain things, you will find the way out. You will find a way how despite facing the most difficult subject in your life, the most difficult problem, you will see, you will still will find the approach to tackle it, to keep your motivation and just push it, push it and push it. Behind me is a library. When I wanted like to change the scenery, I was going here and studying next to that window because in this case, I was able to see the Evans Hall and my office, my old office was on the side of this building. I'm going to show you. Let me share with you key things that will help your motivation going and to prosper in your PhD. The first key is to be happy about small wins. You know, when you try to understand some super difficult theorem or super difficult proof or just when you're attacking something extremely complicated, the first natural kind of expectation of ourselves, I, I had that personally, that I wanted to understand this upon first try. And that brought so much trouble for myself because I was telling myself that, oh my gosh, you're so stupid, you're not able to understand the proof of this theorem which is written over there upon one read, the first read. But then I realized you're not supposed to do that. During your first approach to something super complicated, you just need to be introduced to that topic. Then you need to give you some time, your brain to process it. Then upon like second revisit, third revisit, you're going to dive deeper and deeper. And finally, upon you're going to be ready, you will be able to sit down to have a, uh, an empty piece of paper in front of you, a pen, and you're going to, from ground zero to QAD, when the proof is done, you will be able to write the entire thing and write the entire story. So that's why what I recommend. When there is something super difficult, split this into parts and then try to conquer it upon one try. Set yourself some timelines to say like, by the end of this week, I will try to understand the theorem A and B, but by the middle of that week, I will try at least to understand and to restate the statements of those theorems. And yeah, just take small steps towards small wins, where the small wins are going to bring you a big one. An interesting thing about Berkeley that when you walk around campus, you have this Berkeley symbol. And if you're going to touch it, you're not going to have 4.0 GPA anymore. But since I'm not in the school anymore, then I don't care. The second key is about changing the environment. Sometimes you got stuck in one place and you're thinking too deeply and you're surrounded like by the stuff that kind of keeping you distracted. And for example, your room might keep you distracted, might keep you unmotivated because your brain just see the same scenery all the time. So that's why I try to do something new, try to get out and try to change the way how you study because sometimes simply changing the your environment will help you to kind of motivate some of the neurons in your brain in this case you will not expect that oh probably if i'm going to study in a library instead of the coffee shop okay it depends like if you like noisy not noisy but the goal is we always need to entertain our brain because when we entertain our brain we keep our neurons active and in this way the motivation is going to go up. This is the Evans Hall. And here's like a Ukrainian flag, which is super, super cool. 
and my office was on floor eight, but not from this side. So let me go on the other side of the Evans Hall. The next key is to talk to people. When we learn something complicated, we usually need guidance for that because it feels like you're entering the completely dark room with a couple of matches. So in order like to figure something out, you need to light it on. But the amount of time that you have this match on will not going to be enough to see the entire room what is happening. So that's why if you get stuck, if you feel done, if you feel not motivated, just go to talk to your peers, talk to your mentors. If you don't have mentors, try to find ones. And when you talk to them, ask questions, be genuine, tell them it's okay that you don't understand something. I was so ashamed to go and ask questions and that was a huge loss for me. And please don't do this mistake. If you don't understand or you feel like you need some guidance, go and ask for that. When I change my approach to the things, when I start to ask questions without any guilt, my life completely change. So please go do that. Talk, try to talk to the people, try to discuss math. It doesn't matter if sometimes will people say no or you will have some sort of like no feedback. You will ask like 100 people and there is going to be at least one who will reply. So go and ask questions. Okay, uh, this is finally the side where I had my office. And I feel like this is actually the windows of my office. The next key is to reflect what you have achieved. You need to remember that your current moment where you at with your current dreams and goals, sometime in the past, this is the exactly moment, this is exactly the place in space and time where you wanted to be and somehow you achieved and you got here so that's why when you have your next dream your next goal which is really hard you need to know that it's achievable upon hard work because this is exactly how you got to your current place and last key don't feel guilty to take breaks it's really important to take a break because during breaks it is exactly when your brain, all the knowledge that you have acquired during card study is going to be kind of materialized, is going to sit in inside your brain. Think about this as you going to the gym, working out, and trying to get all these muscles. If you're going to work out every day, muscles will have no time to grow. In the same way, you need to take those breaks to your brain muscles to grow during those breaks. So please take breaks. When you exit Evans, you can see this huge library over here. And also we have our Berkeley C company. And yeah, this is the view of Berkeley, which is super beautiful. Finally, remember that your PhD is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So you need to prepare for that. So that's why it's really important to eat healthy, to have enough sleep, to take breaks, to keep yourself motivated, to do other things, to talk to people, to just get out and do some silly things. Can you please drop a comment below what keeps you motivated in your high school, college, university, PhD program, postdoc, professor, or like your job? How, when you feel that you burned out, how you push yourself, what do you do? It's really interesting, so please share. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.